All right, good morning. It's June 2nd, 2022. Just had to get some things from Home Depot, of course. More wood. All right, let's go home and uh, put it to good use. All right, back at the shop here, we have five boxes of this uh, flooring. Um, I went ahead and put another layer of underlayment down just because I wasn't 100% sure. And it also says underlayment required. So this floor is basically concrete and then slabs of wood and then OSB and then holes drilled in the OSB with expanding foam underneath it to level it out and make it acoustically sound and stable. And then it has concrete, self-leveling concrete on top of it. And then it has underlayment and then it's gonna have flooring. So it's like a big sandwich of all kinds of stuff. But um, none of that would have happened if this floor was level. I just would have put underlayment directly on the concrete and then vinyl flooring. However, the floor wasn't completely level. And since these aren't permanent, when I move out of here, I'm gonna take all this stuff down. Um, I can't pour concrete directly onto the concrete because it would be impossible to remove. But this way, I can have a nice level floor with that nice acoustically sound um, wooden feeling underneath and have it perfectly level using that uh, self-leveling concrete on top of the OSB. So that's the reason why there's so many layers. Um, there's really, as far as I know, not really another way to to do it. If there is, let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to address it. But basically, yeah, it's a nice, nice even layer of concrete going all the way across. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mix these different boxes up because these were all probably made on possibly different days or something with different pigments and stuff. So we're gonna open each box and we're gonna mix them all up. That way there's no, it, it won't look funny once we put it down. It'll look a lot better. All right, we're making some progress with the floor in here. So I'm at probably the most tricky part of the entire installation. It's going together really smoothly, pretty quickly. And I'm actually uh, probably gonna run out of, of pieces. Um, I don't know how I messed that up. I thought I actually had too many, but it looks, like I have to get, it looks like I have to get another box. Um, I'm at probably the trickiest part here. Um, this is a little channel that I routed for the pocket door. And going around this corner here, it's, you know, and then I also have to do the same thing over here. Also, this piece here is gonna be thinner than the rest. So I'm gonna go ahead and that's five inches. So I'm over here on the table, I'm cutting my pieces. Um, I'd like to get all that stuff done. Then we have to, of course, go back to Home Depot and get another box because my math sucks, apparently. All right, so I just saved about $70. This is the biggest piece of scrap that I have left. Everything else was used. So here we go. I have my nice routed channel here. This is the completed floor. Uh, everything looks great. Everything feels solid. It doesn't sound hollow under my feet because of the expanding foam I put under there. There's no motion, there's no dips, I can't feel, it feels level. And of course, around the edges here, there's gonna be um, wood molding that goes all the way around. So any kind of, you know, this one here is almost a half inch. But we'll cover all that up right around the edges. And unless I point it out, you probably wouldn't notice it, but these pieces here are thinner and then as we get back to this corner, the pieces start getting smaller and smaller. And this piece here, I actually made out of three separate pieces, so I didn't have to go to the store. But you wouldn't be able to see it unless I pointed it out like that. So, floor's in. We can start, I could technically um, start moving my, um, my computer and my big desk and all that stuff in here, get my TV 
a computer monitor mounted there. Probably what I'm gonna do is build something on the wall where I store the computer tower and possibly like camera batteries and all that kind of stuff is gonna go on this wall. Um, this wall is gonna be mostly guitars and we'll figure it out as we go. I have a little touch up painting to do. I, when I put that tape, that painter's tape up on my drywall for the, um, the, the self-leveling concrete, when I peeled it off, took the paint with it. I was like, well, that's, that's not very good. Painter's tape, this stuff here, right? Sharp line, multi-surface. Yeah, it'll pull up multiple surfaces. Anyway, we got that taken care of. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna organize, we're gonna clean and do all, all that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I was routing um, just now, I went ahead and accidentally routed right along the edge of this because I was using the workbench and I carved into it. And I was like, well, that sucks. It took me, you know, three days to build this thing. So I know how to fix this pretty easily. Basically, we're just gonna um, take some epoxy that I do have and we're gonna mix it with sawdust and we're just gonna fill that in. All right, here we have some two-part epoxy and we're just gonna go ahead and mix them together. Or maybe we won't. Ah, smart. So this is the slow curing epoxy. Um, if you want something permanent, you gotta get the slow curing stuff. Never go with the five minute epoxy because it's exponentially worse. It doesn't grab onto the material. That should do it. Then we're gonna mix some sawdust into that as well. This has got a 30 minute work time, which means I can stir it around for quite a while before it starts to set. Here's my dust bag from my miter saw. So this is what I always use to, uh, to fix like drill holes and stuff like this whenever it happens. Cause it's gonna, I mean, it's a workbench. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen a lot. So epoxy, is the thing to fix it. And you just fill, fill it in there, you wait, you know, two days or something, and it'll be rock solid, back to normal, and then you can sand it flat, and it's good as new. I always try to get the, uh, the air bubbles out, because those will be noticeable, especially on a side injury like this. All right, so once this is full, we'll let it set. It'll kind of self-level there. And then we're gonna go ahead and continue on with the epoxy stuff. We're gonna start chiseling out some of these knots. So as you can see, there's a few little knots and stuff here. Uh, all of them don't need to be chiseled out. Only the ones that are like, like this one maybe. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, it has like loose material in it. For these, you just want to kind of bust them apart a little bit and just fill them up. All right, we'll continue on with that. And it's 4 p.m. Probably gonna be the end of the video here. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you liked it, leave me a comment. I do read them all. I appreciate them all. And I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching.